Have you ever felt like you're being watched? Well, maybe you have, and now you can experience that thought on the big screen in the all new horror film, 15 cameras. It's David Stark from Watch Our Pass. Today I'm on camera here to talk to you about the new indie horror film 15 cameras, which is coming to on demand on October 13th, 2023. It is a new indie horror film that is apparently the sequel or maybe the spiritual sequel to an earlier film called 13 Cameras. Uh, it came out in 2015. It was originally called The Slum Lord, then it then it became 13 Cameras. This film follows the events of that movie and has references to that as well but don't worry you don't have to see the original film to enjoy this movie and understand it i didn't even know that 13 cameras was out there before i saw 15 cameras i love 15 cameras i went back and was like reading up on it and read about 13 cameras so it is something that is going to be on my list now but let's talk about 15 cameras my hot take is I really loved it. I thought it was really, really good. It's just a really well-made indie horror film with a great buildup, some wonderful camera work, as you would hope in a film called 15 Cameras, and a really satisfying ending. So I just enjoyed this. It was a nice breath of fresh air. It was a fun surprise. Definitely check it out when it comes out on October 13, 2023. And make sure that you check the room you're watching it in to see if there's any other cameras because it's you're definitely going to feel unsettled throughout so so i'm going to tell you a little bit more about the movie a few things i liked a few things i didn't like and then really quickly go into the ending so as you can imagine there will be spoilers in the ending section if you don't want to know what happens in this movie and you might not there are some really good surprises and like i said there's a really nice satisfying ending that is a big surprise as well i would turn it off when i get to the ending section but don't worry before that i'll keep it vague i'll keep it spoiler free i'll let you know when i get to those spoilers so in 15 cameras, you have two people, Cam and Sky, who bought this duplex on the cheap. Their plan is to renovate it, rent out one side of it, and live in the other side. It's a pretty smart move. It's a pretty kind of economical way to get a house and to build some equity. But there is a little wrinkle here because this duplex was owned by this serial killer, this like horrible person named the Slumlord, who had a bunch of properties, I guess, throughout wherever the state this is taking place in and installed cameras in all of them. And he would like watch the people in the houses. He would like sneak in. He had like little command centers. He would sneak in and watch them. And occasionally he would kill them. And that's why Cam and Sky were able to get this so, so cheap. But some of the events that happen after make them wonder if the cameras are gone and even if the slumlord is gone. So well, that being said, things I loved about this movie. The first, I love the slow buildup. The film really takes its time, lets you get to know the characters, lets, lets you get to know the situation, and really kind of slowly build up the tension as more and more things are discovered. It takes a while for kind of the, the big exciting part to happen, but I loved it. I liked how kind of slow it was, how it kind of methodically built up some of the concepts and some of the kind of like concerns that were happening. I thought I thought just thought it was a really well done film. I was, and I was definitely on edge for a lot of it, which is great. The second thing I love, I love the effects. Now, like I said, there's not a ton of the of effects. There's not a ton of the practical effects, but when they use them, I'm glad that they are practical because it definitely helps with your suspension of disbelief. This, this, this is a film that kind of like benefits from having the practical effects, especially with so much stuff on camera. Like if they tried to do, uh, you know, VFX in that as well, it just would have looked off. The third thing I loved about this movie is the camera work. Look, it's called 15 cameras. You expect there to be good camera work. And there is, I liked how a lot of it took place via like camera recordings, but that's not the only cameras there. There are a decent amount of like camera recording shots, but there's also really good, just like general camera work. It has an old school horror feel to it where, you know, sometimes it'll zoom in on certain things as you're like waiting for something to happen or like you're waiting for the tension to build up or it'll show one view and you're like really wondering like what's happening on the edges, but you can't see it because the camera is just very good about being direct and showing you what it wants you to show and leaving the rest of the world to your imagination, which is never a good place in an unsettling horror film. And the fourth thing I love, I love the meta. This is a movie like that has a true crime pull to it. Like the uh, these characters bought this house where something happened. And throughout it, Sky is like watching a documentary about the uh, the slumlord, about the like serial code. What happened is when they caught him, they used the footage that he recorded to like make this uh, essentially Netflix documentary about his crimes. And so Sky is watching this while it is happening. It's giving you really good background about the slumlord in the first movie, which I thought was really smart. So you don't have to actually watch 13 cameras to get a good sense of what happened. But it also is like, a true crime obsessed person watching true crime in a movie that kind of ends up being true crime ish. I love that it had that through line throughout and it served a lot of really great purposes. And the last thing I love, I love the ending. I thought it was a great ending. I really liked it. It was, it was satisfying. It was a little surprising. I'm not going to go into it right now. I'll tell you about it later in the recap, but I really love the ending. So things I didn't love as much. The first, 
there was a pretty abrupt character change partway through. Like I said, there's a slow buildup. There is a nice slow buildup, but uh, it feels like one of the characters changes fairly rapidly once kind of a big thing is discovered. And it just felt a little unnatural. The person's personality and kind of desires changed very, very quickly. Uh, and it felt like, you know, they needed to move the movie along. I make, I understand why they did it, but it felt like it was a little bit too abrupt, too quick, too like down that rabbit hole. And the second thing I didn't love as much, there are some dumb decisions. It's a horror movie. Of course, there's going to be dumb decisions. And they do kind of help to move the story forward. But there are some really dumb decisions. It's what you expect. And like I said, I love this movie. So none of those really affected my enjoyment of it. But they're just things I noticed. So that being said, 15 Cameras comes to On Demand on October 13, 2023. So you can watch it in the comfort of your own home. Just make sure to check that room so you know that you are not being watched while you are watching the 15 Cameras. Uh, Check it out. It's really good. I enjoyed it a lot. And uh, also, if you wanted to check out the original film, the, the kind of earlier film, 13 Cameras, you don't need to check it out before watching it. But if you wanted that backstory, you can see that for free on Amazon Prime and prepare for 15 Cameras, which comes on October 13, 2023. So all that being said, I'm going to go into the ending now. So if you don't want to happen to this movie, I would turn it off now because there will be spoilers. So. Like I said, Sky and Cam bought this duplex. Uh, it is a is a duplex, so there's two floors. The top floor is where Sky and Cam live, and the bottom floor is what they are renting out. Now, this duplex was owned by this serial killer mastermind named the Slumlord. That's how they got it so cheap. But is there stuff that's left in here? Well, the police swept this area, but Sky is not convinced. Sky is a true crime obsessed hero. We'll say, you know, she's like, she's watching true crime. She's doing her investigation. She is learning more about the slumlord and she starts thinking you know what maybe they missed something maybe there's something else in here now now her boyfriend cam uh he is a little more skeptical he doesn't think anything is here he thinks that sky is like silly for watching all this stuff and but and he just wants to get to work renovating this area so while he is working on the the bottom level trying to get it renovated trying to get it set up he finds this like secret room in like a utility closet he is a, it's like a panel that he can open up and slide in and, and inside it is this like insulated secret room that has a safe that you can't open and all the slumlord's computer equipment which means it's connected to all the cameras in the house which cam is able to access and start watching i don't know why he does this i don't know why he touches it he should have just called the cops and sold all of this as like true crime memorabilia i'm sure that it would have fetched a really really good price but he doesn't. He starts using the equipment. He turn he turns this on, and I have to say, this had some really great cable routing. Like there were apparently all these cameras were PO or like network PoE because they had a nice thick bunch of cables coming down, all braided up. Like the Slumlord did some really nice work, even though he was a terrible person. Did some really nice cable work. So, like I said, this this has a pretty abrupt character change. Before this, Cam was just kind of like you know a, a dutiful boyfriend trying to get this house in order. But once he discovers this room, he becomes a, a voyeur creeper fairly, fairly quickly. He starts watching video of uh, his house. His sister-in-law comes to stay with him, and he like watches her in the shower. Uh, they finally get this place renovated. They rent out the lower level of duplex, and he pushes really hard to get these two like recent female college graduates to live in there. He goes full on creeper, and he also like tries to ingratiate them, ingratiate into their lives, like he tries to hang out with them he like cooks them food it is very very uh painful to watch and very very obvious but he does what he can and he keeps sneaking into there to try to watch the footage now the problem is that secret room is in the bottom level the like lower level of the duplex it is where his new tenants live so he is taking a big risk sneaking into there to try to watch this footage but he still does now while Cam is in this room, while Cam is doing all of this, he fortifies it a little more because at one point he sneezes and the 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 tenants heard him. So he puts some more soundproofing up. He really kind of makes this a soundproof bunker. And he starts watching the, a lot of the footage. And one of the things he notices is this creepy white van that comes by his street occasionally. And, and earlier, his sister-in-law thought that she had seen someone looking in the window. Now, they all just thought that she was seeing things. I don't know why Cam didn't check the cameras. Like, he's got all these cameras. He's spending too much time creeping out on all these girls. He should have checked the cameras to see if there was someone at his door or window. He didn't do that. He fortifies this area. He continues, like, watching these cameras, ignoring his job, uh, and just kind of turning into a general creep. And like I said, he takes a risk every time he goes in there. He 
uh, has to sneak into their apartment. And, and one time he gets caught. He like snuck in when he thought that they were out. He's watching as he's leaving. One of the renters is like coming back from a run. She freaks out as she should. If your landlord is in your apartment, like without giving you notice, she should freak out. She yells at him. This starts causing uh, like a rift in his relationship with Sky because she obviously notices that he's being weird and like creeping out on these girls. And so he try he tries to balance this. Eventually, it comes to a head when Sky gets a text from the tenants being like, you, "You need to tell your husband to stop being creepy. Like he's freaking us out. We don't like it." They've only been there for I don't know a couple of weeks probably. It's not very good overall, and uh, this causes Sky to like tell him to just just stop i mean she's actually very understanding given like what he's doing she's like just you know whatever it is just stop doing it there are tenants they are you know living in our house just stop doing it i think that she should have probably blown up and been like throwing them out maybe who knows but sky also is like obsessed with the slow more she's watching the footage she starts to think you know everyone thought the slow more was dead because his van after he did all these murders his van was found on fire uh, you know, near the Mexico border. So it seems like he was driving and his van had a problem, it caught on fire and he died. Well, this guy's like, I don't know. They didn't actually verify his DNA. Maybe he didn't die. And she also notices this creepy white van that Cam noticed earlier in the camera. She notices it outside their house. So she starts thinking like the slumlord might be alive. Well, turns out the slumlord was alive. He, later in the footage, Cam was watching the videos and that white van pulled up and a little like laser pointer shot at one of the cameras. So that tells him that the van is like looking at his house and also it knows where the cameras are, which means it must be the slumlord because the slumlord is the only person that knows where all these cameras are. The slumlord was very, very good about installing these imperceptible cameras. So if he knows where it is, it must be the slumlord. Now, Cam also freaks out because there, because inside the room, there is this like air purifier that shoots out like, you know, a, a scented air thing every like couple minutes or something. At one point, Cam gets freaked out and he bumps that and it knocks off the cover. And inside, he sees that there's a camera in the air purifier. So not only is you know the slumlord alive, the slumlord has a camera in his command center and he knows that Cam is there. Not good at all for Cam. Not good at all for this situation. But Cam decides to force the situation. He makes a sign, puts it up on the camera that says, if you want this, which he means the safe, he pulls the safe out to show him, then come meet me right now. Cam didn't seem to plan this very well because he did not have a weapon. He did not do much, but he forces the slumlord's hand. The slumlord finally shows up. He finally appears and Cam has his phone dialed to 911 ready to call just in case. He says, hey, just go get whatever it is you want from that room and leave and we will like be done. Like just, just get it and leave and don't ever harass us again. The slumlord is very, very angry. He's very upset. I don't know why Cam doesn't just like, I don't know capture him call the police like set up a sting up like who knows he should have done any of this stuff but i think he was probably worried that he would get implicated because he was being creepy and because he was on camera watching this command center of stuff uh so he just wants a slumlord out of his life but the slumlord doesn't go into the room by himself he, he's, he's like grunts and like forces cam to go in also i don't know why cam did this another very very bad move don't go into a like secluded secret room with this mask murderer but he does he goes in the slumlord goes in he gets the safe he opens it up and inside is all these keys so it must be the keys for all of his property he must have hidden it there when he escaped and now he finally has it back so now he can kind of continue his slumlordy reign of terror so while they're in there ren one of the renters comes back uh into the apartment and cam like tells him no no stop like don't kill her he sneaks he sneaks out of the compartment tries to get her to leave but remember she thinks he's super creepy already and she's like what are you doing in our apartment like i'm not leaving with you like what just get out get out she doesn't listen to him unfortunately it takes a little bit too long and the slumlord appears he you know hits ren he hits uh cam cam passes out he wakes up in the room and he's tied up to the chair watching the camera so he now gets to see everything the slumlord does so while this is happening sky comes back and and cam sees all of this from the camera he sees sky come back and he starts like trying to escape trying to yell uh but he's not able to get he's not able to get out he's like taped to the chair he's like duct taped over his mouth and he can't do anything about it now when now when ren gets back the slumlord is there also he had like set a trap he like locked the doors apparently made it so she couldn't escape 
And although she she tries really hard, the slumlord overpowers her and ties her up. And Cam is watching all this. And I loved this part. I thought it was a really great kind of like twist because he was doing what he's loved. He was like in his room watching the cameras, but he's seeing the slumlord attacking his girlfriend, which he does not love. So it's kind of like a nice, I don't know, like a be careful what you wish for situation. He is tied up watching all of this happen and can't do anything about it. So the slumlord just ties her up. He doesn't seem like he's going to kill her, but as he's about to leave, he gets hit over the head with a pipe or like a something, like a some sort of board thing. And in pops Sky's sister, uh, you know, Cam's sister-in-law, who saw what's happening, set up a, an attack and like hits the slumlord a couple times. The slumlord falls down. Now, again, in, true, in any sort of horror movie, he does keep hitting until that person can't get up. Unfortunately for... Uh, Sky's sister, she hits him like three times and, and then tries to like help Sky, but the slumlord is still up. He like grabs a drill and like drills into uh, Sky's sister into her stomach. So there's a little bit of blood here. Sky during this whole time is trying to cut her tape. She's like duct tape on her hands. She uses a screw to cut the tape. She's able to get, escape, but not before her sister gets like drilled in the stomach. So the slumlord is trying to strangle Sky's sister, and Sky is able to break free, push him, you know tackle him essentially grab that drill and she drills into his eye and this is a really nice practical effect scene like the drill goes in you see the eye like spinning around it, it looks a little over the top but i like i loved it but she drills into his eye she finally is able to end this horrible situation and the next thing you see you see that documentary series that sky was watching and sky is on it she like so when she was watching the true crime documentary earlier, it had like interviews with survivors of the slumlord and a main survivor who was able to like escape and talks a lot about her story. Well, now Sky is on that again, a nice, like, kind of like be careful what you wish for. She had been watching that whole thing. She'd been researching the slumlord. Now she is part of that story. She is on there talking about her experience, talking about the slumlord. And eventually they ask about Cam and she's like, we never found him and i loved the, i loved this twist she's like we never found him like we don't you know we don't know where he is uh we don't know what happened to him and then you see like cam in that room tied up you know watching sky take out the slumlord he's like cheering her on he's like yeah yeah and he's like now baby come get me come get me he never told Sky about the secret room. He never told her like where he was going. He also extra soundproof this room so no one can hear it. So he is now stuck here, tied up, obviously not as resourceful as Sky. He can't cut his bonds apparently. So he is stuck here, tied up, going to waste away. Eventually, I assume the smell will like, you know, alert people, but there is that air freshener. Maybe that will cover it up for a while. But now again, Cam is stuck in this room watching the cameras doing what he kind of loved but now he is going to be doomed because of it so that is 15 cameras like i said i really liked it i thought it was a good movie i really love the build-up i love the kind of overall story and i love the ending i thought that was a really clever way to end so definitely check it out when it comes to digital on demand on october 13 2023 and uh, thanks so much for watching if you like this review please like and subscribe to this channel it helps me out a lot make sure all my new content goes straight to you thank you mm -hmm.